one, two, three. All right, let's start. Six years ago, on a winter day, MIT meteorology professor entered some numbers on a computer software to simulate weather patterns and left his office to get a cup of coffee because as we all know, programmers love coffee. When he returned back, he noticed something that would change the course of science and the way we look at nature. His computer model was based on 12 differential equations in 12 variables representing things as temperature, pressure, speed, humidity, and so on, whose values could be transformed into graphs of lines rising and falling over time. On this day, actually, Lorenz was repeating a simulation he had run earlier, but this time was a little tweak. He had rounded off some value from 0.506127 to 0 0.506, eliminating decimal places from 4 to 6, expecting that it would do nothing to the program, and he probably did it to save the computer some memory, as all programmers do. But to his surprise, that very tiny alteration drastically changed the whole pattern that the software would produce over two months of simulated weather. And this unexpected result led Lorentz to a powerful insight about the way nature behaves, that is, very small changes can lead to large consequences. And this idea came to be known as the butterfly effect after Lorentz himself suggested that the flap of a butterfly's wings can ultimately cause a tornado. And this, by means of deduction, leads to the idea that it is impossible to forecast the future because we do not have a fine grip over the countless variables that do affect our measurements. And as soon we know all of these countless variables, our measurements themselves are not 100% accurate. And this school of thought extensively clashes with Laplacian and Newtonian schools of thoughts, which assert that if we knew everything about the universe in its current state, then, as Laplace himself said, nothing would be uncertain and the future, as the past, would be present to our eyes. I've once been told by my physics lab professor that our interference to measure something is itself a form of error, and this idea exactly manifests itself in the famous double slit experiment of quantum mechanics where a beam of electrons will behave as particles if you look at it and will behave as waves if you do not look at it. And this is <laughs> way crazy, but actually, you know, this is a standard for quantum mechanics. If you understand it, then you know that something is going wrong. The problem is, if a butterfly can cause a tornado, then by the same token, it can prevent a tornado. But we will never be able to know this level of precision. We only know that the probabilities exist. To help you understand, let's toss a coin a thousand times. Probability laws will tell you that there's a 50% chance each time you toss a coin that the coin will be tail. So it should be tail 500 times out of the 1000. But actually, if you do the experiment, it will probably not be this number. I can guarantee you this. It will probably be somewhat close to this number, but not exactly 500. And the thing that you can conclude out of this is that the very next toss, you will never be able to predict whether it's head or tail. But why? We are often taught in schools that small changes in the equations shall lead to small permutations in the outcome. And the answer lies in the nature of the equations themselves. For Lorenz's program, they were nonlinear equations. And to help you understand the concept of nonlinearity, let's check out this following analogy. I want you to compare between two prides of lines, one that has 20 lines and the other has 22 lines. So they initially differ by two lines. Now, each pride of them grows uh, with the same rate, that is, they double in number annually. Now, I want you to come after a decade, analyze the two prides, and you will find that they differ by over 2,000 lines. So what started out as a difference of two grew out until it became a difference of plus 2,000. And this shall show you how error propagates over time nonlinear systems. Now, to further show you the power of small details 
in real life, I will mention two examples that actually took place here on Earth. One, in the early 1900s, young Adolf Hitler applied for the art school and got rejected. And by his own saying, and that of scholars, this very rejection went on to shape his metamorphosis from an aspiring artist into the human manifestation of evil. We cannot imagine how would it have been if Hitler was accepted in the art school that day. Two, World War I. The First World War happened due to an assassination of an important figure in Austria called the Archduke by a Bosnian um, terrorist called Gavrilo Prensip. On the day of assassination, the Archduke had sent a message to the driver about some change in the route, but the driver didn't get the message that day, sadly. Had he actually taken the route that was in the message, the, sh the, the terrorist wouldn't have been on the same street as the car and thus wouldn't be able to shoot the Archduke and his wife, escalating the events that led to the First World War. So it was literally a failure of communication, something that might have taken seconds, that led to the loss of millions of souls. But that's history. What about today? Today, all we can know about COVID-19 is that it can mutate at any time, but we will never be able to predict what will that mutation be like. We only know three probabilities. It will become more lethal, the mutation will, does nothing, will do nothing to it, or the mutation will stop its danger entirely. So we only know the probabilities, but we will never be able to predict what's beyond the probabilities. New research suggests that a single change in a nucleotide can cause breast cancer. And for your knowledge, a nucleotide is a structure that is approximately 0.9 billionth of a meter, or as it's known, 0.9 nanometer. So it is very tiny change in a structure that is 0.9 nanometer that can cause breast cancer and lead someone's, someone's life to end dramatically. Now, if you claim that what you do each day will not benefit you after a year, then you have to change your mind after you check this out. 1.00 raise it to the power of 365, that's equal to 1. Simple math, nothing fascinating at all. But make that one 1.01 and raise it again to the power of 365, which by the way is the number of days in a year, and it will be equal to, guess what, 37.7, giant leap. And this meaning shall, shall show you that the, the small things you do, which seem insignificant in their own, will accumulate and manifest themselves into what makes you the way you are. There is order in the laws of momentum that govern the collisions of the billiard balls, but you will never be able to predict how would these balls behave in the first shot, because a slight change in the angle or the speed of the shot will lead to entirely different motions of the balls in a rather chaotic pattern. There is order in the smoke of the cigarettes that rises up because it's hot and therefore less dense than the surrounding air, but you will never be able to predict how that very turbulent smoke of uh, how that very turbulent smoke you'll never be able to predict how will it be positioned in space exactly in the very next second. There is order in supercooled liquid helium and a dripping tap of water. But if you increase the rate of flow of water and increase the temperature of helium, both systems will become chaotic. But you know what the astonishing result is? The astonishing result is that the transition from order to chaos in both systems is governed by the same exact number, which is the Feigenbaum constant, which is equal to approximately 4.669. And this is fascinating. You have to be fascinated by this. Now, why am I telling you all of this? It's clear that if we continue to disregard the minor details that happen in our lives, that we will face a lot of troubles because of error propagations. We have to admit that our earthly systems are both ordered and chaotic, and that there is no contradiction in that. We have to take into consideration every little detail that happens in our lives and keep questioning ourselves over and over again. Yes, I said that slowly on purpose. Um, we do not want the 2008 economic crisis um, to happen again, because if you think about it, it happened because we disregarded the sen sensitive dependence on initial conditions. World War I happened because we disregarded the sensitive dependence on initial conditions. 
Adolf Hitler became the Adolf Hitler we know because we disregarded the sensitive dependence on initial conditions. Now I want you to go to your backyard, pick some butterfly, look at it, ponder upon it, and ask yourself what difference can this little creature make to humanity or to the universe? And until you find an answer, it seems that life is indeed an organized chaos. Thank you. This was Ahmed. Ishaan.